Hi, who is ready for the 4th of July? It's right around the corner, but are your dogs ready? So today I wanted to talk about my favorite top five must have tips to keep your dog, to keep your pet safe this holiday season. If you are new to my page, I am Sarah Surrett and I'm a certified professional dog trainer and I help coach and train pet parents how to teach their dogs so they can have a well-behaved dog and live happily ever after. And if you're watching on the replay, please hashtag replay below so I can always um, stop and say hi. I always like to see who's watching. And But let's get back to the 4th of July. I would love to hear what your plans are. Honestly, my family every year when I was growing up, we had a tradition to go down to the local park where they had a fireworks show and we'd put our blankets out and we'd pick up, you know, food for a picnic. And it was fun every year. That's what we did. All my friends, my elementary school friends, and then it went into high school. But now that I have my own family, we're still kind of struggling to find that tradition. Um, do you have a tradition for 4th of July? I mean, it's been from one year going to friends' houses, another year going out to the river, another year staying home and just watching all the fireworks shows on TV. Um, a couple years ago, we went down to the San Diego Bay and watched the um, fireworks shows at the Bay. They have like four different locations, so that was really cool. But um, the thing with the 4th of July is that we – have a blast usually on the 4th of July, but our dogs don't. And do you know that the 4th of July is probably one of the scariest days for dogs because of the sounds of the fireworks? Um, it's not just the visual. I mean, for us, yes, they're very great to look at. They're beautiful. They're fun to watch. But for the dogs, it's really the noise. And I'm not talking fear like they're barking and stuff like that. I'm talking emotional fear deep down inside they're having a tough time. It's kind of like if you are, I don't know if you, if you're afraid of flying, I've seen people, um, I've known people who are afraid of flying. And sometimes when you're sitting in the airplane, you can't see that on the outside, but on the inside, they're panicked. So for the dogs, we want to help them feel as safe as possible. So I'm going to go over my five top tips to help keep your pet safe this holiday. That's just around the corner. And you can start implementing these right away. Um, hey, Christina, do you know, Christina, I thought of you and your pups for the 4th of July, and I'm glad that you are away from Camp Pendleton. That's also what I was going to mention. I actually live in San Diego, and there are local um, military um, stations that practice, you know, setting off explosions and rifle noises and things like that throughout the year. And those episodes are really scary for a lot of dogs that live near me. But so think about your dog. If you're not experiencing that, your dog gets this fireworks show once a year. And so even, even scarier because you're, you're not normally quite as prepared, but I want you to be prepared. I want your dog to feel safe this 4th of July. So the other thing is I'm going to go over my five tops, but stick around to the end because I have a bonus tip that I want to share with you as well. Um, and the question really is, is what is your plan for your dog this 4th of July? I want you to, yeah, Christina, you said body shakes. Yeah. I mean, so sometimes we can see on the outside what's what your dog is dealing with panic wise, stress wise, fear wise. A lot of us think barking, you know, lunging, all that stuff, but really it goes deeper. It goes down into that emotional set of that panic. Right. And so when they're really panicked, they're shaking, you know, they can't eat. Some dogs will try to escape, which is what I was talking about. So the 4th of July is like the biggest day for the shelters because so many pets wind up in the shelters because they're lost. And they're actually clearing shelters right now temporarily to make room for pets that will become lost on the 4th of July. So I don't want that to be your pet, um, but I want to help you be prepared. Okay, so do you have a plan? What is your plan? If you have a plan or you have a tradition with your dog, I, I'd still love to hear what your tr tradition is with your family. Drop it in the comments below. Um, but my first tip for you is leave your dog at home. Okay. If you are going to a party, if you're going down to that local park to watch the fireworks show, leave your dog at home. And 
if you're going to have, you know, if you have a surrounding neighborhood, that's the other thing is where are your firework shows? If you're new to your neighborhood and you don't know what's going on around you, check it out, research and find out, wow, is my dog going to be in like the central hub where all of these shows are going to be happening? Because the noises can be really, really scary for a dog. And so if that's the case, I'd even say get out of Dodge and go get a hotel room, go somewhere you know, with your family or just your dog if you're single and get your dog to a safe place or maybe ask a friend that lives in another part of town that, you know, can watch your dog, okay? So thank you, Christina. Um, all right, so the other thing I wanted to say about leaving your dog at home is this is not the time to socialize your dog. This is not the time to get your dog around all these people and fun things and let's go down to the you know local parade and hang out and picnic and have a glass of wine and wait for the fireworks to start because your dog doesn't want to be there trust me they don't want to be there so make sure that you leave your dog home they are going to do best in their own environment because that's where they feel the safest all right so Again, scary noises are tough for dogs. And you might think your dog has no fear. They may be the best, well-behaved dog. They can go anywhere with you, anytime. But fireworks, different, different story, different beast, different animal. You are going to play with fire on that one. So just help them feel safe and leave them home. So let's talk about home. What does that look like for your dog? I would like um, a thumbs up or a why if your dog is crate trained. Um, we don't wanna start crate training right now before Wednesday, because we don't have a lot of time, and that, that's a process. You want your dog to feel safe in the crate. So if your dog already is crate trained and enjoys the crate and is safe in the crate, doesn't try to escape the crate, I would love for you to put your dog in the crate. So when they are when they are confined, they're going to feel a little bit better. But if they're not used to being confined, then they're going to get really panicked. So you don't want to put them in a huge room where they can run all over the place. And pan I mean, I've heard stories of dogs, you know, jumping through screens. You, you wouldn't imagine the scary stories that happen when dogs are that highly panicked, what they can physically be capable of doing. So to help your dog feel better, if your dog is already comfortably um, satisfied when they go in the crate, they feel comfortable and safe and use the crate. Um, again, it's not a good time right now to start doing that. Um, otherwise, I want you to put them in a room away, furthest away from all the noise. For me, knowing that I'm sort of facing coastal on one side of my house, I would put my dog in the furthest part of my house, which happens to be my bedroom, which is actually where he is the safest. So, yeah, if your dog is just learning the crate, Sierra, again, on the fourth, you know, if you have an X-Pen, that can be also another great tool to have your dog be in. So um, you want to make sure that your dog is actually having, a, you know, a somewhat comfortable space that they're used to. So the other thing I want to talk about, though, is the, you know, if you're having a party, put the dog in the other room. Now, we're not allowed to just set off fireworks um, you know, and I have actually some because we bought some um, when we were at the river in Arizona, which they have little, you know, booths on the side of the road. So this is just one of those. Um, what are they called? The little sparklers. And it might not be a big deal for you and your dog or for your dog. But then there's this. You guys know what this one is? This is a piccolo pee. My little terrier would go bonkers if we set this off. This is that high pitch, like. You know, that's really loud and it can be really scary. And these are just those like rinky dink, you know, little fireworks that you can buy on a roadside shop. But so think about this 50 cents or a dollar. I don't even know how much it costs to the big fireworks that are going up in the sky. All right. So we want to help put them in a room where they're going to feel secure, where they're going to feel safe. Okay. And the other thing that I would do is manage their sight. So we don't want them being able to pair that sound with the sight and get more panicked. So close your blinds, close your drapes, close your curtains, you know, making it dark can be really helpful. If they are crate trained, you might drape that blanket over the top of the crate. All right. So you want to make sure um, that you are putting them in a room where 
they don't have a ton of space, but they're kind of drowning out that noise from the main part of the house, all right? Okay, so number three tip for helping your dog feel safe when you leave them during the fireworks shows on the 4th of July is give them something to do, all right? So I have right here a stuffed Kong, all right? I'm gonna kind of show it to you. It's frozen and it's mixed with peanut butter, yogurt, and some Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried treats. It's all mixed together and it's shoved in there and it's actually kind of defrosting. And when I leave, to, I'm going out this afternoon, I'm gonna give it to my dog so he has something fun to work on when I leave, okay? So a stuffed Kong, if your dog, that's one idea. You can do a, a chew toy. Now, anytime you introduce something new, please make sure you're monitoring, introducing it with plenty of time to make sure that your dog is okay with it, that they're not gonna ingest it or rip it apart and you know swallow pieces or that they actually enjoy it. Some dogs, you know, you gotta experiment with what you put inside of it to make sure that your dog likes the food that you're putting in it. But don't just be, this is not a time to skimp out on food or quality of food. This is like pull out your guns and give them the best. You know, you fried up, um, you know, an egg or you grilled some steak, save some leftovers, mix it up, give them something really good for the 4th of July. So they're, they're interested in working for something when those fireworks are going off. Okay, so when the fireworks are going off, this can actually be paired with the scary sound. And so now you are actually creating a positive association with the sound and something really yummy for your dog to be working on. Now, a lot of dogs, you know what? They're so panicked, they're not gonna even eat. But if you start now and you start introducing the Kong when you're home, maybe when you leave for a, you know a few hours, you'll have a little bit more reliability of that paired positive um, food puzzle for your dog, but there's lots of food puzzles. Um, if you're interested, you can private message me and I'll send you my favorite food puzzles. I'll put a couple links, um, down below in the comments when I'm done. All right. All right. Number four. And if you have any questions, feel free to message comment below and I'll be sure to answer those questions. Again, there's lots of things that you can do. These are just my top five thinking in the moment, what I would do if I were you to help keep your pups safe on the 4th of July. All right. Number four, kind of going back to that room. So we've given him something to do, right? We've given your dog something to do. We've put them in a safe place where they feel comfortable, where they feel secure. We've sight blocked. What I want you to do now is turn on the music, okay? Christina mentioned that earlier. Um, if you are giving them, yes, Christina, absolutely. If you are giving them too much space, which is why I go back to that confinement they're gonna to try to escape, they're gonna to try to get hurt. That's why I don't want you putting them in the crate if they're not used to it and they're really panicking. They actually can, you know, break some teeth, ruin some feet, you know, it's it's really scary. So make sure that you're being safe. Um, also setting up a camera would be good too. If you have an iPad or um, your iPhone, something, or a nanny cam already, you can get one of those pretty cheap and set it up so you can watch them while you're down at the show. And if it's getting really scary and crazy for your dog, Maybe you need to abort mission at the fireworks show and head home to help your dog. Or you call a neighbor to have them come check on him, okay? So leave the music on. So computer, play light classical piano music. Play light classical piano music. So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my Alexa in the background. How many of you have an Alexa? Thumbs up for Alexa. Um, I also have Sonos. I know there's the, the other options out there. I can't think of the names right now. But Alexa is great. Light classical piano music. As Christina said earlier, yes, absolutely. Turn the music up. And studies show that classical piano music, just like if you have kids, if you're a mom and you ever bought the baby Einstein CDs, it's just like that. So it's very calming for dogs. There's actually a CD series called Through a Dog's Ear, which is composed by a very avid dog enthusiast. And she herself is the pianist and composer. And she they actually take out the crescendo, which is that underlining bass. So it's actually a little bit better. A lot of people will say, oh, I turn on the dog show for the dog or I turn on CSI. 
if you put classical music on, it's relaxing, just like it is for us. It has that effect on dogs. All right, so turn on light classical music, piano music for your dog. Computer, off. All right, so we got to love Alexa, right? Super fun. And I will say that I don't know offhand. Do any of you know how long Alexa will stay on? Um, I think it might be four hours. So you might even have to uh, ask Alexa to play for a certain period of time, depending on how long you're going to be gone. Or turn the TV on. If your dog is in a room, there is a light classical music channel. So if you have cable, I would put that on. All right? Okay, so number five. So we've talked about the top four. Just keep Stick around because I've got a bonus one for you as well. But my fifth one is um, identification because God forbid your dog gets out and I want your dog to have ID on him. So make sure that you call your chip home again chip company and you get that ID updated, the chip updated with their information, with your information, and you've got a caller on when you leave with their name tag on it. The other thing that I like are those little blinky, there's actually several great products out there, but you know those little blinky tags that hang on their collar? You can push it and it starts to blink or it's lit up. They also have collars that light up that you can wrap around your dog's collar. Um, I know a lot of people, um, you may not normally have a collar on your dog for safety. Um, and that may be a little bit of a controversial issue right now because if your dog is panicking so much, it might get caught on its neck. So at least make sure that you are, um, at least you are making sure that your chip information is up to date. And I want you to um, join me on Tuesday because I'm actually going to talk about you know, what do we do if we do lose our dog? So there's so much that you need to be prepared to know. And I'll be speaking from my own experience because I did lose a dog. So um, I want you to make sure that your dog has some sort of identification on them. Um, you might get that blinking light or the blinking thing that goes on the collar. So it's on. So if for some reason they break out of the house, hoping that they don't, that they can be seen. All right, and they can be identified. So first and foremost, though, is making sure that your dog is in a safe place and that they're comfortable, that you're giving them something to do when you're leaving them alone, and that you have three days to begin practicing this kind of stuff. It's not a ton of time, but it's better than nothing. So make sure that your dog is in a safe place and um, turn that music on and make sure that they're gonna feel okay while you're gone. And worst case, don't leave them home in that situation. Go somewhere else like a hotel if you can, all right? My bonus, here's a bonus. So there's a lot of nice natural things that we can do like the music and stuff like that. There's also um, a lot of products out there and some of them, you know, some of them work, some of them might work. It's different for every dog, just like it is with us. Okay, so I know that there's some really lovely essential oils that you can use. Um, there's also, my bonus um, tip though, is, is this little thing. This is called a Thunder Shirt. And can you believe how small it is? <laughs> so this is actually for like a five pound, four pound dog. Um, so a Thunder Shirt, uh, thundershirt.com is just another anti-anxiety um, solution for your dog. Again, always introducing it ahead of time. And what it is, it's kind of like, if you are a mom, um, you might be able to relate on this one, but it's kind of like swaddling a baby. So you do those little burrito bean wraps and they're all cozy. Now they have the wombies that you just zip up and they're all in there tucked in and they just relax and it helps them calm. For some dogs, you might not see a difference, but trust me, it makes a difference. So just having another natural calming aid can just add another layer of relaxation and calmness for your dog emotionally, all right? So this is a Thunder shirt, and basically their little head goes through here, okay? And it unvelcros in the front, and then it Velcros around the belly, so you can see that. So this is for a teeny tiny little dog. Um, fortunately, I haven't met, it was even too small for my little 10 pound terrier, so. Um, I haven't had to loan it out to any small, tiny dogs yet, so that's good. 
but you always want to make sure that they're okay with the sound. You want to make sure that you're not putting it on too tight. Um, but you can read about it on thundershirt.com, um, I believe. I will check that website link and put it in the comments below. But it should fit like a hug. Uh, it should fit like um, a hug, kind of snug around your dog. But again, you're going to, to read up on those directions, research it, and make sure that it's a good fit for your dog. Now, some dogs are going to be just so panicked that it might even be necessary that you give a call to your local vet. I am not a veterinarian and I do not prescribe, but there is nothing wrong with seeking out some drug therapy for a panic day like this that your dogs may be enduring or that you know they will. So make sure that you are researching um, the drugs and making sure that it is appropriate. And if you do have any questions about those, feel free to ask um, because I do um, have experience with clients using particular anti-anxiety drugs for this sort of thing. Um, but again, the best thing to do is to call your vet. All right. So I hope this message was informative for you today. If you think that others might benefit from hearing this information, you have a friend or a loved one that has a dog and or a new dog, and they're not sure what to do uh, on this coming 4th of July holiday, please do hit the share button and share it with others. Um, again, if you're watching on the replay, please hashtag replay so I can stop and say hi. And if you have any questions, let me know. And please mark your calendars. I'm going to jump on again probably Tuesday morning and talk about what to do, what to be prepared. So if you do lose your pet at any time, you know what to do. All right. Make it a great day and enjoy your Saturday. Thanks, you guys. Bye.